Howdy friends, this is Pelican Man bringing you another Hammer Time video. Uh, so the list we're running this week, the mana base is unchanged. We still have the five fetches and the four plotted strands and the one marsh flats, uh, four saga, three ink moth, four seagram coast, four planes, one hallowed fountain, and an aganjo, still on 22 land. Uh, still playing the eight zero drops. Some lists have moved off it, but I am still pretty comfortable here. The only reason to really go off it at the moment is to run Giver of Runes, which I kind of as much as I love Giver Runes, I'm not interested in testing right now. Uh, four Asp Sentinel, four Sigarda's Aid, four Hammer, four Drum, uh, Shadow Spear as a tutor target. We're back on the Seal Shapes of Gifts, like the fifth search effect in addition to the four Stone Forge. Uh, four Pure Seal Paladin, still got the Keldra Complete and the Nelsis, and we've gone up to a second reality chip because I really like the reality chip, so uh, I think just more chances to top deck it seems pretty nice. Uh, the sideboard's changed a fair bit. We're testing Prismatic, ending once again over March by the Worldly Light. I think the reason to be on March specifically would be to deal with Ursa Saga. So, uh, like Prismatic ending can hit more permanent types technically, so it is sort of speed over speed, but I don't think that really matters for our deck. So, back on Prismatic ending, uh, still three Sanctifiers, still got the Lion Sash, the Relic of Progenitus and the Soul Guide Lantern is our Grave Hate that are all kind of tutorable, whether it's off Saga or Stoneforge. Uh, the Piping Needle, obviously, really good. Two Spell Pierce. Uh, the two Lavinia still, and we've added two Meddling Mage. This is over the Path to Exile slot because I kind of get the impression that, or how I like to sideboard, uh, I don't bring a Path against the Merktide decks, I only really bring it against Titan, so I feel like Meddling Mage naming Primeval Titan kind of serves the same role. Um, otherwise, the other big change is that we were running two Blacksmith skill main that got taken out for the Steel Shaver's Gift and Second Reality chip. Because my idea is that like the matchups where we need to protect from removal would spring in Spell Pierce. And that's probably good enough. I don't know. But this is the list we're going to be trying today. So let's get into a league and get into match number one. Alright, we have won the Daryl, so we get to go first. Uh... I think we have to mulligan. We could keep because of Esper Sentinel, but like one creature is not enough. Let's mulligan. Uh, this end looks better. Still not a lot of like the combo we stuff going on, but we do have an Urza Saga, so we'll keep bottom of the Hallowed Fountain. Alright, our opponent keeps six. Uh, let's just start with Esper Sentinel and pass. Alright, our opponent has basic island and nothing. Alright. Uh, so we'll play out Urza Saga here. Alright, play out another Esper Sentinel, just for the hell of it. Sure, if our opponent's blue, like, we're gonna get to draw some cards here for sure. And we'll just get in for one. Alright, pass to our opponent. <laughs> our opponent opts. Okay. I would like to draw two cards, please. And there's another Esper Sentinel among those, that's pretty cool. Alright, they put their card on the bottom. Just another island. And passing, okay. So, the question is whether I want to make a construct or if I want to play Reality Chip and Esper Sentinel. I think if they have Counter Spell here, I'll get to draw like a million cards. So, I think playing out this is just better. I should have tapped differently. That's fine. This is a matchup I shocked myself. Shouldn't punish me. Alright, reality chip. If I want to counter this, then I draw three cards, so one and a blue draw three seems fine. This is just a card advantage engine anyway, so if it draws three, that's also pretty good. Hmm. <laughs> Spell snare. Okay, so they can pay for one of these Esper Sentinels. Oh, Spring Leaf Drum was a cool draw. So Spell Snare and specifically drawing like this was a reason to reality chip before Esper Sentinel, I suppose. Let's just, let's just draw a bunch, okay. I uh, could play out the Memnite, but I'm not going to. Just in case we need to get Metalcraft later on. Alright, everyone takes two, and we'll pass back to them. Okay, they played Hallowed Fountain. So I guess that means their blue line just kept Basic Islands for some reason. To Fairy Time Raveler, I will draw three. Thank you. I mean, they can bounce my Urza Saga here, but I don't care if they do that. Keldra's a cool draw. Hmm. Just bouncing an Esper Sentinel? Okay. Draw Hammer. Oh, I forgot to float mana. That's, that's a little annoying. I somehow haven't found Pure Steel Paladin yet. 
I'm just gonna get drum. The question is whether I play an ink moth or a sug. I think I'll just play an ink moth. Uh, so we'll play Stoneforge. We'll find a hammer, I guess. Yeah, there's no reason to grab Shadow Speed. We'll find hammer. So Supreme Verdict is like the one thing I'm most scared of here. So I'll play out Cigar's Aid so that I can kill them with a Nexus if they decide to Verdict us. And I'll play a Sentinel so that I can draw an extra card if they do. I suppose it was free to play this Springleaf Drum beforehand, but whatever. Alright, we'll attack Teferi for one and attack them for one. Maybe should have attacked them with both in case they have specifically Solitude. Because then they could instant speed the Wrath. That's probably correct. Discard their hand size, huh? We have to discard one card. Um, yeah, I'll just discard Drum, I suppose. All these other cards are so good. I should have just played out of Memnite. I didn't even think about discarding the hand size. Alright, they have Scalding Tarn. Prismatic Ending, my Cigar to Aid. Okay. I'm just drawing a million cards here. Alright. Um, well, let's try casting up Pure Steel Paladin. It resolves, huh? Okay. Alright, let's try casting a Colossus Hammer. Uh, I'm not going to animate Ink Moth here because I might want to use Stoneforge to drop the Kelder into play. I get to draw off Pure Steel. Let's equip for zero onto an Esper Sentinel. Alright, go to combat. Alright, attack with these. See what happens. Alright, they're scooped up. Sideboarding against a blue-white control, probably. Spell pieces seem good. I assume they're planeswalkers, so I'm going to bring in Needle. Lion Sash seems good to grind. I think that's all we want. And I think I'll just cut Ornithopters and call it a day. Uh, we're leaving in Memnites because it's specifically like Teferi Time Rabbler. I don't imagine they'll have many blockers. What's more likely is that they have a Planeswalker that goes to one loyalty and a Memnite can finish it off. Also, if they Solitude and Ornithopter we gain zero life, but I don't think, yeah, the Flying Evasion's too relevant here. Okay, I think I'm going to keep this just because Urza Saga should be good enough. We will keep. Alright, our opponent mulligan to six. And they have Flooded Strand and Pass. Okay, Ganjo is kind of dead. That's fine. Um, do I play a Memnite here? Why not? Just start getting in for some damage as soon as possible. Alright, they fetch for Rogan Trium in my end step. Play a Mystic Gate. And looks like that's all they've got. Oh, another land. Fantastic. Uh, we'll just play a Saga and get in for one. If they've got an opt, sure thing. Alright, Fairy Time Rebeler. This should bounce our Saga. Yeah, I don't think bouncing Memnite's correct there. I think they just meant to bounce the Saga and, like, blow us down. Springleaf Drum is a good draw. Uh, I'm going to fetch for a Plains just to thin out my deck a little because I'm very flooded. Alright, Springleaf Drum and Memnite, and we're going to pass. Alright, they have Castle Vantress. And then, Path to Exile my Memnite. Okay, let's float a mana. And I will let that resolve. I don't know why they're pathing here. Oh, that's funny. Now, let's just make a construct now. Let's see if everyone's got something else for us here. They tick up to Fairy, that is A OK. Snapcaster for Path? Yeah, it's pretty good. That's that punishes us for getting the last planes out of it. I honestly just didn't expect to see Pato Exile here. I mean I am flooding, so it's not hugely punished for fetching there, like I'd already drawn into way too many basics. Alright, before this goes away, we will make a construct. Um I kinda just wanna get needle and name that's fairy here. That's probably pretty good. The fairy time reveler. Um, and then I will play out an Esper Sentinel. And I think I'll just play the Pure Steel while they're tapped out as well. And just pass the turn. Okay, they play out an Ottawara. That's interesting. Alright, looks like they're just passing here. Okay, Saga's a cool draw. 
Alright, I'm just gonna attack them with everything. I'm just gonna kill the snap cast with an Iganjo. I just want to maximize my clock, and this Iganjo is kind of useless otherwise, and I am flooded. Mage's Charm. Targeting the S for Sentinel. Do I draw a card opponent? Hmm. I think I'm still just fine with allowing that to happen. Like, they're not going to get to draw cards off it. They were better off just drawing two cards without Archimedes Charm, honestly. Okay, Snapcast blocks the Pure Steel Paladin. I will shoot the, pure, the Snapcast of four. I suppose it makes sense. It shrinks this as well, but let's play out another Esper Sentinel. Oh, not in the Declare Blocker step, we won't. And we'll play this. And pass it back to our opponent. We're on another island from our opponent. Yep, they're just passing back by the look of it. Yep, cool, cool. We draw another Esper Sentinel. I like that. Uh, so the only punish for playing it pre-combat is Cryptic Command. Otherwise, it's just going to force their action now. So and it'll grow our Construct. Right, let's go to combat. I don't think I'm going to offer to trade Esper Sentinels here. Just attack them with the Pure Steel and the Construct. What do they have here? Five mana? This Solitude, okay. This is probably taking out my Construct and trading with my Pure Steel. Yep. So maybe I shouldn't have attacked with Pure Steel either, because this Saga could be getting a Hammer later. I think it's fine. I think I'm just going to get Shadow Spear anyway. I'll play a Tap Pearly Fountain and pass. Apparently there's one card left in hand, and their board state is super garbage compared to ours. Alright, looks like they're just passing back, so I will make a construct. Alright, one tab, we'll make another construct. Middle this was a good pickup too, actually. Uh, so I'll just get Shadow Spear, uh, click to the construct, and go to combat, force them to have something. I've got to have Supreme Vertex in there somewhere, right? So I kind of just want to leave this nettle cyst back to rebuild they're blocking with last for sentinel because i guess they don't understand how trample works uh, i'll just pass it there all right they're scrying with their castle dangerous that is a-okay i mean maybe the block of the S for sentinel does make sense maybe they're hoping to find a verdict here so they just saved themselves a point of damage i guess all right apparently just draws and passes straight back to us love to see that uh, Scatterzade's a good pickup. Uh, I will play it pre-combat because I might want to use this Nettle Sis for lethal. If they have like something like a Cryptic Command, they're going to tap my team anyway, so... Um, I suppose I just attack with everyone because I can flash in this Nettle... I can't flash in the Nettle Sis, they've got Teferi. Uh, so in that case, let's just hang out. Attack with these two, force them to do something. Dress down. Okay. Let's see if our opponents learn how to pay for Esper Sentinel yet. Okay, they paid for one. They have successfully managed to pay for both. Okay, if that's fairy wasn't in play, uh, I would flash in a Nettle system and be real happy. Thankfully, one of my constructs lives this. Right, I'm just gonna pass down to that. I'm still holding this Nettle Sist for post wrath, or like next time I can just play it and equip it and threaten lethal. Alright, this looks like a prismatic ending. On the piping needle, okay. And they didn't pay for the first sentinel. They didn't pay for the second sentinel, okay. Alright, this Terry has delusions of grandeur, I guess. Okay, so... Uh, I suppose we'll just play at a drum. Um, I kind of do just want to play this nettle cyst now. I've got the Memnite for like a backup next turn. Right, looks like they've got something. Counter spell, sure. Would you like to pay for my Esper Sentinel's opponent? They would not, apparently. They only have two cards in here. I don't know what they might be holding here. Oh, Keldra. That's castable. Not right now, but very, very castable. All right, play drum so that this is lethal now. All right, force one of their last two cards to be something. Well, they're immediately tapping mana, so they have something. Is this going to be another Archmage Charm stealing something? Yeah, okay. Stealing my big construct. Alright, I'm just going to move the Shadow Spear off. I need to play the Memnite to do that. 
I just don't want them to be able to attack and gain life. Nope. Come on. Equip to an S for Sentinel. Alright, pass back to our opponent. So the construct that they sold is now just a 1 1. Still was worth stealing because it was scary on my board. They can downtick their Teferi to bounce something. That doesn't seem good because they lose their Teferi. And next time I'm just going to hardcast Caldra. Okay, bouncing the Esper Sentinel. That is fair enough. They play a Polluted Delta. They've got two cards in hand. All right, another Teferi. And they are paying for the Esper Sentinel. They've only got five minutes left on the clock. And this is game two, so the match is ours. It's just a matter of how it ends at this point. Will this Teferi bounce something as well? Bouncing Sagata's aid? Okay. <laughs> Alright, let's scoop it up. So that is match one to us. Let's get on to match number two. Alright, we've got an opponent for match number two. And we've won the die roll. Let's go. Alright, our opponent is playing Yorian. Uh, um, I am going to keep this hand. It's got a lot of potential. I just think Urza Saga is probably good enough. So we'll lead Seacrim Coast, Sagata's Aid, and Memnite and Pass. Doing it this way, so if we draw a hammer, we can start getting in, I guess. Alright, Windsor Teeth and Fetch from our opponent. Snow Cover Plants here. This feels like four color money pile, and this feels like a prismatic ending on Sagata's Aid. Yep. Uh Esper Sentinel's a good pickup. We'll take that. And watch as these two knuckleheads get furied next turn, huh? Let's get in for one. And pass. Alright, Wooded Foothills, and they pass back to us. Let our Saga tick up. Play it in Ink Moth, I guess. And let's get in. Alright, pass it back. Right, they're fetching. It's getting a tapped Catcher of Trion. Alright, Snow Island. And passing back. It's kind of scary that they're doing actual nothing. Alright, make a construct. Do we want to make another construct? I think I want to force them to have it here. What's that a mana? Let's get a hammer. Play planes. We'll play pure steel. Right, let's animate the ink moth. All right, lightning bolt on my pure steel paladin. So I probably should have equipped first, huh? That's a mistake, I guess. They will pay to keep me from drawing. Sure thing. All right, play an ornithopter. Go to combat, attack with all. So the one punish here is like solitude plus ephemery, but kind of already in trouble if they have that anyway. All right, they go to seven and they have one infect. Their opponent scoops it up. Let's go to the sideboard. So they're on money pile. Uh, I want Lavinia. I want needle. And I potentially want Sanctifier. I don't think I want Sanctifier. Spellpierce doesn't seem like good either, though. This is a matchup where Blacksmith skill would be better than Spellpierce, but this is also a matchup that sucks no matter what you do, so... It's kind of whatever. Let's bring in Lion Sash for some, like, mid-range stuff. I didn't see Ragavan, so I don't know whether I can cut the Memnites or not. Uh, let's cut Steel Shapers... I kind of need to leave stuff in for the Springleaf Drums, huh? Like, I need to leave the Drums in the Castle of Vineyards. But I can cut two Ornithopters. Like, maybe just the Keldra. Because they have Solitude, I guess. Let's go with that. Uh, I like this hand. This hand's pretty rad-tacular. We'll keep. Obviously, we can get punished here for, like, having Saga as an important land and, like nothing to equip the chip to yet, but I think it's good. My opponent plays tapped stomping ground. Okay. Show me a zero drop. No, oh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Unfortunately, it still doesn't let me equip my chip on two, but that's all right. My opponent just plays an island and passes. Um, I suppose it is just a guard as aid here. If they have Ice Fan Codal, am I willing to trade my Esper Sentinel for it? Probably not. There is the, the Snake. I, mean, I potentially could have blocked a Hammer there, but I think they're still, like, flashing this Codal and blocking, right? Even if they knew I had a Hammer, right? They'd probably want to protect their life total. Button Growth? Okay. Would you like to pay for my Esper Sentinel? They would not. Okay. 
That's a little scary. The Sage You My Saga. Okay. Let's get a Hallowed Fountain in tapped. So I've still got Sagata Zade, so I can reality chip and start doing stuff. I really wish I knew what my top card was right now. Or I could Pure Steel. No, I think I just want a reality chip. I'm going to do it this way so I can just play the Esper Sentinel anyway. Ooh, a hammer. That's pretty good. Let's cast that. Alright, so this the uh, Kotal doesn't have Death Touch. They kind of have to chump block here. And they don't? Okay. They have another Ice Fang Kotal. Sure thing. The fact that they're playing Sorcery Speed is pretty good for us. Their Kotals have Death Touch now. Alright, they are Soul Tuning my Esper Sentinel. Alright, my turn. Oh, it's a Plains on top. I kind of just want to play a pure seal cleared off the top, even though I found a saga. Hold on, do I, do I have Metalcraft? I don't have Metalcraft, do I? So it's a whole other challenge, isn't it? Uh, that's fine. Let's do this. Uh, the Ink Moth can animate itself. Bolting my pure seal. Okay. That sucks. Alright, we'll just play the saga then, I suppose, and pass. My well, opponent's on two cards in hand, so we might be okay. Ren and six, that is fine. They read by the Beseju, which they currently can't use. Okay, they have a Flutter Strand, so they can use the Beseju. I don't know whether they kill my Saga or my Chip here. It's probably just the Saga, right? My Shock and Temple Garden. Yep, there goes my Saga. I'll just get a Plains. Alright, and they pass back to me. Well, Thoughts is a Good draw. So now we have Metal Craft. So do I want to get in with Ink Moth? I think I do want to get in with Ink Moth. Which I'll just try to codal for, but I think I'm okay with that. Uh, equip Chip to Ornithopter. A Flooded Strand. Stoneforge on top doesn't do anything for us, so let's fetch. Ink Moth on top doesn't do much for us either. Alright, so we'll play the Esper Sentinel. We'll equip to our Ink Moth. And we'll attack them for Lethal Infect. Yep, they jump block. That is fine. So they have one card left in hand. Alright, they shoot down my Esper Sentinel, which is kind of what I was planning, right? That was kind of bait so that they wouldn't return a land to get to their fifth land. Eternal Witness? Sure. They return Lightning Bolt. So that's going to kill our Ornithopter? Or maybe a Pure Steel. This is why I equipped the Ornithopter so that, like, this is this is an easy, an easy choice for them. Because if they kill this, then I just equipped this anyway. Yeah, so they kill the pure, so that makes sense. Yeah, so I can't just move this hammer around freely, huh? Uh, kind of cool with Lavinia off the top. Alright, Memnite. Uh, I just want to keep chaining stuff, so I will play that off the top. Drum is fine. Uh, Scout's Aid is fine. Shadow Spear is cool. Maybe I shouldn't have put it there. Ah, that's fine. Uh, is there any point attacking? kind of like attacking, actually. Because I have to trade the Codal for this Ornithopter. Yeah, I think that's good. Or they just take one and they're on five now, which is also kind of good for me. Alright, they have an Abundant Growth, so they will Cantrip. Another Abundant Growth, okay. So if they ever buy Yorian and Castle, they're going to draw way too many cards. So we have to try and kill them before that happens. Alright, there's land number five, so this turn might just be by Yorian. Oh no, it's return to Seiju. They're going to besage you. I don't even know at this point. The reality chip, sure. I will get a planes. If I can find a way to equip this hammer, I win the game. Seeker and Coast is not it. Actually, it is, because that's just eight lands, huh? Do, do, do. Equip to here. Do it the old fashioned way, huh? Just how Mark Rosewater intended. Alright, let's scoop it up. So that is match number two for us. We are currently 2-0. Let's get into match number three. Alright, we found a point for match number three. We are on the draw. Uh, this hand is Gasoline, so we will keep. They also keep seven. Springleaf draw at the top would be perfect. Okay, so that is fine. Let's just start with Cigar Aid and Memnite. 
Maybe I should have just let Esper Sentinel because my opponent had a Scalding Tarn. But if they just like bolt a Memnite here, I don't think I care. Unholy Heat the Memnite, sure. Be nice if I could find blue matter for this reality chip. Oh, we did it. I'll start with the Esper Sentinel. Counter spell, sure. Steel Shaper's Gift to get. Do I get Nettle Cyst? I think I'll just get Nettle Cyst. I like Nettle Cyst. Next time I'll just play Saga and Nettle Cyst and force them to deal with that also. Turn after I can like make a construct, do reality chip stuff. Seems good. Or I could just play Chip and Hammer. I don't think I can get punished for Chip and Hammer in this matchup. Especially if they're just playing Ragavan. Oh, I'm a Thopter. So let's do that same plan, but with an Ornithopter involved. So chip, equip here, uh, yeah, hammer, just pop that straight on the Ornithopter and pass. The issue is here, I can, this is now gets punished by Archmage's Charm, but I think it's better than just like, oh, god damn it, opponent. I suppose chip wearing hammer was better than whatever. How do I get out of this? Pure Steel's a good one. Except I'm nowhere near Metalcraft. Actually, I am, right? These are these are mine. Huh. <laughs> That's dumb. Because it's equipped, I still get to do stuff. Cool. Yeah, because it doesn't have to be attached to, to my creature. That's interesting. So, Pure Steel. Play a Colossus Hammer. What is this? Oh, Fuck off! Oh no! <laughs> Bolt my pure steel, you bastard! Ah, oh, pass ten. Yep, I take twelve. Uh, Calder on top. Come on! I don't know what I can do here. Esper Sentinel doesn't do anything. I suppose I just make a blocker here. Metal Sis is also a blocker though. Uh, whatever, we'll float mana. Uh, Shadow Spear. What do I just get a creature? I'll probably just get a creature. Just get a Memnite. Alright, let's send off the top. Not bad. Alright, and we hit a planes. Oh, stop it, opponent. Alright, play out the Nettle Cyst. And pass the turn. Ooh. I would not like to put Nettle Cyst on. M Knight, thank you. Alright, consider from our opponent. Alright, so Darcy has flying now, so we're dead to any like lightning bolts. Or any removal spell really. Well not necessarily actually. Alright, Ragavan's hanging back. Right, just chump block there. Do you have a lightning bolt opponent? No? Okay. Well, Cigar's aid. Ink more. Pure Steel? Um, I've already made my land drop, right? So I can't kill with an Ink Moth through that Ragavan. So let's just try and equip here. I should have moved my hammer off, actually. If they don't have interaction, I win here. Put my hammer over here. Right, cast my Memnite at the top. Right, equip that to there. Alright, animate this Ink Moth. Equip the hammer there. They have Unholy Heat? What? I mean, if they have Unholy Heat, I'll just always dead. I don't... I don't understand. I don't understand. I was just always dead. They could have killed my Memnite last turn and won. I don't... I don't understand why they held it. So now what? I'm just dead, I think? I mean, I was dead anyway. Like, I, I would have needed Ink Moth's block here, and they would have Unholy Heated that anyway. Uh... I guess my one out is hope that they... Don't block for some reason? What? Ah, uh, What? What just happened? Why did they not block with Ragavan? I'm so confused. Okay. Well, we'll take, we'll take the free win. That, that game was... Uh, our opponents came to lose and they chose to lose it. So that is A-OK -okay with me. Uh, spell pierces can come in. Uh, I want some of my Grave Hate. Probably all of my Grave Hate. Is that too much? 
I don't care for prismatic ending, I don't think. Uh, so, I think I just keep in memory to take out the Ornithopters. I'll take out the Steel Shape's Gift. I like both reality chips. Spin was good. I'll trim a drum. Um, because of Archmage Charm, I kind of just want to trim this Keldra. I think Nettle Sist is fine because it's really easy to re equip. And just another drum, I suppose. Let's just go like that. Just be like slower and grindier. Alright, I like this hand. We can keep. Turn on Esper Sentinel. Turn to Pure Steel. Turn 3 stuff. Alright, they've got the dreaded Mishra's Bauble. Tagging themselves, so they're doing the old Scry trick with a fetch land here. They liked what they saw and they're shocking in a Steam Bents. And here's Ragaban. Okay. Uh, Secret Curse was a cool draw. Let's just play out both of our X ones. And try and trade with this Ragaban, I suppose. This is pretty good on the draw, having two things that can trade with the Ragaban and Sentinel taxing our opponent's ability to remove them. Okay, Darcy is fine. Ragaban getting in, huh? I'll trade an M Knight for that. Alright, they just pass it back. Ooh, we found another Mem Knight. Alright, we'll get a Planes, play the Pure Steel. And uh, I think I chill on this other Mem Knight. It's the worst they can do, dash a Ragavan, and I'll just like trade the Sentinel for it, I guess. Alright, Fetch Shock. Just give me like a heat on my Paladin or something. Okay. Bolt on the Paladin, but I get to draw a card. Ooh, we draw a Saga. Alright, the dust is a 3-3 three, three now because the four cards in the graveyards are all different types already. Alright, and they just pass to us. Ooh, I like Soul Guide Lantern. Alright, let's play out this pure steel, let's see what happens. If they counter it, I'll just play out the Soul Guide Lantern. Okay. Uh, let's cast the Mem Knight and the Hammer. Alright, and Holy Heat on the pure steel, sure thing. So, I could have sequenced differently there and uh, played the hammer out first, then the Memnite, then the pure silver. But then I just like bolt one of these instead, and it's the same thing. Yeah, let's just get in for one. Alright, so next time we get to play the Solgo Lantern and make a construct. Alright, our opponent gets in for three, that is a okay. Alright, expressive iteration, letting us draw a card, that's cool. Cigar Zade is a good pickup. So I'm probably going to try and deploy the Sigardazade at some point before the Saga goes off. So they can get a hammer and equipment for free, I think. Alright, they found a time and they're fetching immediately. And consider, sure. Now there's a consideration to just play and pop the Soul Guide Lantern. Let's take away the Delirium. Ooh, that's a good one, actually. Uh, yeah, let's play Sanctifier. Alright, so that's taking them off Delirium. Let's go to Planes, play Sigarda's Aid, and play Soul Guide Lantern. Uh, and we'll take away Mishra's Bauble, because it's going to be... Well, we can take out the Consider. I think it's going to be harder to get an Artifact in the bin now. It's definitely one of the two. So take out Consider. They still have Blue Instance, but most of their deck is like... I feel like it's just an easy one to replace. Let's just take out the Bauble. Alright, and get in for two... And pass the turn there. This Sanctifier might just win us this game now, actually. So currently they can't cast a Merc Tide. I kind of don't want to pop this to just, like, keep them off Merc Tide, but I might have to. Looks like they're just passing. No, EEX equals 1. Well, that's annoying. So they're almost definitely not paying for this Esper Sentinel, then. Yeah, we draw a aid. That's cool. So I'm going to wait for them to sack this and put that artifact to the bin and then eat their graveyard. They're letting me untap? Okay. Ooh, Stoneforge. So I could play Stoneforge, get Reality Chip. Uh, hmm. Maybe that's just something I want to do next turn. So I want to get a zero drop here because of that AE. Oh, this is good, actually. Yeah, let's do this. Let's make a Construct. And they're letting me search. Did I bring a Needle? I did not bring a needle for the E. I'm not that clever. Okay. Okay. Let's just grab a Mem Knight then, I suppose. Alright, go to combat. I think we attack with everyone. 
Yeah, let's just attack with everyone. Darcy probably trades with Memnite here. Yeah, that's fine. So they take it and now they'll pop the E. Oh, I wish I was big brain and brought in the Pythian. I thought we'd been so gassed there. Well, I probably shouldn't bring that in because that's not something that should be coming up. Uh, do I exile the graveyard or do I draw a card? I think as long as they don't like resolve a Merktide, I win. So I think I just exile the graveyard. All right, pass to them. So if I draw a land here, I can win, I think. Dress down. Okay, that kills my constructs. My Sanctifier is vulnerable now. They have five cards in hand. That's kind of scary. And they cast Serum Visions. Okay. Funny thing is I can actually load up their graveyard with red and black cards now if they really wanted to. Oh, come on. Show me your land off the top, please. Oh, Fury. Okay. Land off the top doesn't do anything for me now. Oh, but Fury also doesn't do anything. <laughs> oh, opponent. Maybe they intended that. Maybe they just wanted to get a 3-3 double striker into play. Show me a land. Any land. Any land. Yes, baby. Okay. Do this. Do this. Uh, Stoneforge will find a hammer. Play Sigarda's Aid. Play hammer. Go here. On my pro red Sanctifier on Vec. And attack you for 12. All right. Another match in the bag. Uh, let's get on to the next one. Got the opponent for match number four. We have won the die roll. We get to be on the play. Whoa. God, what do we do with these kind of hands, huh? Keep them and hope Stoneforge getting Caldra is good enough. Uh, I'm kind of wanting to... Yeah, let's just mulligan. Uh, this hand's the same. So we'll keep this one. Bottoming... God, I really want to keep this reality chip. If I bottom a land and don't draw a third land, I get kind of punished. But I kind of need to draw a blue source anyway, so let's do this. Can I afford to play a hammer on one? Probably not, just in case I draw a cigar to Zaid. Well, I've got a stone forge. But I can't really do anything with a fuel seal at the moment anyway, so... I guess we'll pass there. Oof, untap steam vents. Is this Merktide again? Ragged van. Uh-oh. Now we find the Springleaf Drum. I really want to play the Springleaf Drum. I think I, I just have to play the Springleaf Drum, right? Mm. Yeah, even though it means I might have to trade my Stone Forge for this Ragged van instead. It's not ideal. Not ideal. Which means I can't really get Caldra here. I mean, I can get Caldra. Let's just get Reality Chip, I suppose. Let's get Nettle Cyst. Nettle Cyst seems fine here. Time for my opponent. Darcy. Okay. Fetching immediately. And a bolt on my Stoneforge. Okay. All right. They get in with Ragavan. This sucks, but we have to accept it. They hit an Ornithopter. Come on. Just hitting zero drops. So rude. Okay. <laughs> I drew the Caldra. Sure. Oh, I think I just pass. It would be nice to have drawn a land instead of a Caldra, but... Or even a zero drop, you know, I wouldn't have minded drawing a zero drop. Uh, expressive iteration is fine. Uh, if they attack here, I will trade this and make a construct. See if they kill this, I'll make a construct. Mistress Bauble in Exile, that's kind of good for them. Because that gives them Delirium. And a million cards in their graveyard. Lightning Bolt, my Memnite. Alright, we'll float a banner. And Lightning Bolt is a okay opponent. Alright, let's make a construct. It's only a 2 2, so we would trade with the Ragavan, which I'm still just fine with. So now I don't get to use this Springleaf Drum, which sucks. That's fine, I'll just float a mana here. Uh, what do I want? What do I want? I've found Sigarda's Aid, so I just want a zero drop, I think. Yeah, I think I just want an Ornithopter. Okay, so we're going to mana floating. So let's play Sigarda's Aid. Alright, play the Reality Chip. Pip onto my Ornithopter. Play the Nexus. That would be nice. Uh, yeah, and I guess I'll just play this hammer and put it on my Ornithopter. I do get punished if they find Archmage's Charm, but I don't think I can really afford to play around that. 
Right, they're starting to consider. I like to see that. Right, got a fiery eye. Do they have an Archmage's charm? This looks like a Merc Tide. 7-7 seven, seven Merc Tide. That is A-OK. -okay. They get in for three with a Darcy. And a Ray Ray. That is fine. I uh, shouldn't need blue mana, so I can play this planes pretty freely. God, that's a little annoying. Hmm. I kind of want to play it just so I can keep putting spells off the top, but... Um... Okay, let's get in with the Ornithopter, I suppose. See what happens here. Yeah, I assume they'd want to jump block. Um... So, this is 10 in the air. The only thing I can really do about that is animate Ink Moth. God, this is a pretty bad spot to be in, so I just die to a Bolt. And I can't even really play Reality Chip unless I animate the Ink Moth to do it. Yeah, this sucks. Just play the Nettle Cyst and hope I survive a turn. Okay, play the Nettle Cyst. And pass. Lightning Bolt in my face. Okay. Just make sure they're going to attack with both, I guess. Unholy heat on my germ. Okay, that's entirely unnecessary, opponent. They're still trying to do shit. We'll just go to the sideboard. Uh, so I liked how we sideboarded last time, bringing in Grave Hate and Spell Pierces. There is still a consideration for Needle, but it really only turns off Engineered Explosives, and I think I can just fight through it with Reality Chips, so... That seems fine. Uh, so we'll leave the Memnites in. Uh, we can what, cut the Caldera. Got like two drums or something. And uh, so the Shaper's Gift. Uh, it looks a bit right. Let's go with that. All right, we'll play first. Um, uh, yeah, I'm just going to keep this. Double Sarg's got to be good, right? I think I just get Hellif. No, I've got Springleaf Drum. I'll just get a Plains. Not that I think the Light Turtle matters anyway, but... Okay, Ragavan. I don't really have a good turn to, to fight a turn one Ragavan. Show me a Memnite. Um... God, what do I do here? Stone Porch, I guess. Get, like, Reality Chip. I think Stone Porch get Reality Chip. I could get Nettle Cyst. Uh, I think I just get Reality Chip. And then we'll try and trade the Stone Forge for a Ragaban. I could have got Hammer, actually. And just played it. No, no I want to be able to block. Alright, there we consider. Oh, I just don't have a removal one time. Okay, we'll, we'll trade. Alright, we found a Ganjo. Um, what do we want to do here? Just make a Saga token? Yeah, I think I just want to make a Saga token, huh? Or, like, potentially a Ganja if I need to. Alright, Darcy is fine. Fiery Islet. Alright, let's make a Construct. Uh, so I'm going to float a Manor of Thorns going away, because I'm not making two Constructs anyway, so I can just make a Construct on this one. Uh, what do I want to grab? Is it crazy? I just want to grab Hammer, because I have Pure Steel. Uh, let's grab Shadow Spear, actually. Um... So I currently have Metal Craft. Alright, let's play out the Pure Steel. They have Counter Spell. Okay. That's annoying. Uh, I've still got a land drop. Um, so I can what? Play Stoneforge Mystic. Or Lion Sash. I think I just want to play Relic. Do I even want to play a Ganjo as my land? Or I could just make a Construct. Let's... Or I could play Relic Pop Relic. Let's play Relic and make them exile a card. If I want to keep them off Murktide, I have to just pop it here. I think it's more often to just play Stoneforge, get Caldra. So if they Murktide, they can't deal with my Stoneforge. Oh, I bought it at Caldra. Nels, this is fine. D for zero? Okay. I think this still puts a bit of position. I'm not being able to cast Murktide and hold up this AE unless they pop the AE now. Oh, there's the Merc. Oh, I was wrong. I was wrong. Okay. Oh, yeah, because it's a veil, of course. Alright, so on tap, we find pure steel. Oh, I'm not going to make a construct stay at the EE. Was this dress down, maybe? Nope, popping the EE. 
Uh, sure, that's fine. So I get Colossus Hammer here. All right, then I, do I pop Relic? Otherwise this mana's going to waste, I think. Hold on, can I play Chip? No, I don't have blue mana except through this drop. Like, I think I can play Chip. Let's, let's play Pure Steel. Uh, let's equip Hammer to Stoneforge. All right, now let's play the Reality Chip. Draw a card, which will be the Memnite. Right, pass the Memnite. I think we just move the chip to the stone forge. All right, load up the stone forge. Go to combat. Get in for 12. Which they don't have to block, but I'm going to gain a lot of life. Okay, I have trample opponent. Uh, then second main. Uh, let's load up the pure steel. Maybe that's wrong, actually. No, they can't really deal with this, can they? Um, I'm going to do this and just diversify our threats. So the Shadow Spear is very easy to move around regardless. The Hammer here means they can't deal with this pure steel. The best they can do is like steal my Memnite with an Archmage's Charm, but like moving the Sash is also pretty easy. Okay, that's a pretty good one. That's a pretty good one. Uh, let's just make them exile a card from their grave. Okay. Would you like to pop your engineered explosives opponent? No? I suppose that makes sense. Okay, let's play Flooded Strand. Um, so the Nails is going to be pretty good as well. Do I just put Lion's Hash into play though? We're going to fetch first and just see what ends up on top. Okay. So Nettle Cyst, if they block, then all these go away. Nettle Cyst be one, two, three, four. Four. So that would still be lethal here, but not here. All right, let's play Lion Sash. All right, I get to draw a card. Uh, so I lands a good one, actually. I think. Um, let's reconfigure for. Let's equip the zero. One, two here, I guess. I think I just want to make them deal with this Memnite. Hmm. I can still put the Nelsus in play with the Stone Forge. Um, so I can play the Soul Guide. There's not much point playing the Soul Guide, is there? Uh, let's just play out another Pure Steel. They're almost definitely popping this AE, right? I should have probably moved the Hammer to something else. That's fine. Let's just hold up Line Sash activations. Force them to act. They're not popping AE, okay. Shocking in a Steam Vents. It's another big Merc Tide, okay. All right, they're not attacking, okay. Uh, let's use the Stone Forge to drop in a Nettle Cyst. All right, draw a card. And the Living Weapon. Drop a turn. Okay, play the Flooded Strand. Saints Fire Index a good one. Cigar right, Zade we're gonna chill on for a bit. So this is currently an 8-8. Uh, so let's, let's just move everything onto there. Um, yeah, let's move everything onto there. Actually, let's move the Lion Sash first. All right, this will force them to pop the EE. And then we can rebuild from there. Right, I don't care about the, the Relic, I'll just let that go. So this is a 4-4. Four, four. They block with their 7-7. Seven, seven. Uh, there's not much I can do about that. Let's let that happen. Uh, put the Nelsis to the Pure Steel. Put the Lion Sash to the Stone Forge. Do I want to play the Cigars 8 off the top? Probably. Let's just keep digging. I've already made a land drop. I don't really want to play. Yeah, let's just play the Soul Guide and just eat their engineered explosives. And pass it there. Alright, looks like they're just passing through. Alright, Marsh Flats off the top. Uh, hammer's good. We'll play a Hammer. Uh, where do we want the Hammer to go? Okay, our friends conceded, so let's go to game number three. Uh, side point, I don't think I want to change anything. Let's just run it back. Uh, this is good. We'll keep. They also keep a seven. They have a turn one Darcy, sure. Thank God they don't have a turn one Rayman. We really need to find another White Source here, but I think this hand is good. Okay, so we'll play Saga. Then we'll play Stoneforge. 
And I uh, think we just get a... Oh, they're on Holly Hitting, sure. I think I just get a reality chip again. I think I'm better getting a reality chip than I am getting a hammer. Alright, reality chip and pass. Alright, bobble from our opponent. Putting another bobble in the grave. This feels like it's going to be a fast Merc Tide. Blood Moon. Okay. Jeez, that's that's real bad. Real, real bad. Oh my god, Jay doesn't do anything. Uh, okay. We have a very white heavy hand. Alright, I think uh, we might lose this one. We need to find a basic plans real, real soon. And then, or like Springleaf Charm would also be good. Holy Heat, sure. With Darcy's a three trees already. I have no way of dealing with Lion Sash, huh? Uh, with Blood Moon. That's what I meant to say. Still drawing absolute nothing. Our friend's just donking us for six every turn. Yeah, Blood Moon's kind of kind of rude. Yep, another six. We're on five, we need to draw something. We draw nothing. Okay, our opponent wins that one. Uh, so we're currently 3 and 1. Let's go into match number 5. Prepared for match number 5. We're on the draw. Um, we're gonna mulligan this one. Kinda does nothing. This one's cool. We'll keep, we'll keep. Um, suppose we bottom. Um, tend to just bottom like a land or something. No, bottom an autocopter. Uh, they kept seven. They leaned with Tanical Sanctum, so Living End would be my guess. That's for Sentinel was a good draw. Sleet S for Sentinel. Uh, it's a Memnite. And pass. Yep, there's a Straight Wraith. Straight Wraith. A Curator. This isn't ideal. Uh, they play a Misty and pass back. Cigar aid. Okay. Uh, maybe I should have played Ink Moth there. I probably should have played Ink Moth. Stoneforge. Alright, Stoneforge. Uh, I believe I'm just meant to find Hammer. Yeah, reality chips doesn't really make much, much sense here. Alright, attack for two. Alright, if our opponent has a turn three living end, I think we just lose. Maybe not, actually. Alright, the and for a basic island. Ugh, Waker of Waves. They bend a land though. Right, Spiral of Canal. What is this gonna be? Shardless? Shardless. Okay. I will get to draw a card off my Esper Sentinel for what that's worth. It's a land. God, that's a gross board state. If I survive a turn. Can I kill on the crack back? I think I can. How do I survive a turn though? So make a construct. Right, so there's taking for 7, 13, 17, 19. So I really just need to block one thing. So I can play the Cigar to Zade here. I only have one flyer. They might misplay here. Force of negation. Um Okay, so uh, I can't win from here, I don't think. Because I can't animate and... I mean, I can kill something? Let's play it out, I suppose. I can kill the Waker of Waves. I might be okay, actually. I need to draw a white source. Attack with everyone? Okay. So we'll animate Ink Moth here. Go to blocks. We'll just block the waker of waves. Oh, I'm an idiot. I don't have a cigar to play. What am I? What am I thinking? Uh, that's fine. Yeah, I still don't think I can win. I'm pretty sure there's nothing I can draw that gets me out of this. Esper Sentinel. Oh, come on. Don't do it to him. Uh, I forgot to play the mana. Uh, so I could have what, double hammer. I could have won. Can I still win? No. If I'd floated a mana, I could have won, I think. I was just clicking too damn fast. Yeah, because I could have then played this hammer and had two hammers and... 
Put them both here in one. Whatever. What a stupid deck. Okay. Uh, what do we what do we want? I feel like Lion's Touch is just way too slow. It's not even worth considering. Spellpiss seems good though. Lavinia seems good. Medley Mage seems good as well, honestly. These all seem pretty good. Uh, and I suppose we could bring in a Grey Pate. No point bringing in Sanctifier here. Uh, Reality Chip is too slow and deadly. Caldra's probably fine. I think I want to, like, be fast. I want to, like, keep all of this stuff in. Do I just get Esper Sentinels? I think I do. Let's do that, and then, like, cut one of these. Don't have much interaction, so Caldra might just be good. Um, Let's leave Caldra in, I suppose. Run it back like that. All right, we'll go first. Scarzade Hammer, Pure Steel. Uh, we'll keep this as a combo hand. All right, we're gonna fetch turn one just so we hopefully don't draw lands. Which is maybe a mistake because I am now gonna shock in this Hallowed Fountain. All right, and we'll pass. So we'll kill them on turn three if they have nothing. All right, that was a good draw. Play the drum. And pass. All right, they fetch Shock Steam Vents. Cycle Curator, sure thing. They shock and Breeding Pool. All right, they're passing. Ooh, Meddling Mage, that's a good one. So I could Meddling Mage, naming Living End. What am I scared of here? I'm scared of the turtle. Um. Can I do both? I might be able to do both actually. Let's start with Meddling Mage. So I'm scared of the Sky Turtle. I'm scared of Foundation Breaker and Force of Vigor, if that's a card they run. Meddling Mage naming Living End. So I can animate, I can attack, but I can't then drop the hammer. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to pass there. Cycle Curator. Cycle Curator. Oh, Moto's really struggling. What is this? Forest, apparently. Cycle Street Wraith. There it is. Forest is loaded in. Alright, they're just passing. Okay. Shadow Sphere's a good pickup. Alright, so we'll play Saga. Play Pure Steel. Alright, we'll animate Ink Moth. And then we will... Flash in this hammer. If our opponent wants to deal with the Ink Moth, we can put it on the Meddling Mage. Force of Negation, come on. Oh, actually. I will leave the Ink Moth back. Get him for two. Alright, post combat, play Shadow Spear to draw a card. Uh, I suppose we'll put the Shadow Spear on the Meddling Mage. Just so it can't die to fire. And we'll pass there. All right, turtle to bounce the meddling mage. Yep, that's about what we expected. And they've even got the grief, huh? Must be nice. But they pitch the grief. They pitch the living end. Okay, so they've got the grief. They have the turtle. Do they also have the living end? Or well, the cascade spell, I should say. God, they're gonna get such a board. It's gonna be gross. Doing it in my draw step? Sure. God, I get to grief my meddling mage. Why? Why are they all on my side of the battlefield? What's that about? Um, what do I want to name? What do I want to name? I don't even know that it matters. I think we might have just lost. Uh, you know what? Let's do the meme. I am already dead. Sure is taking our opponent a while to uh, choose which card they're going to grief away out of their entire one options. Nice. Well done, opponent. You got there. All right, my saga ticks up. Play an Inkmoth. Um, pretty sure I'm dead, but let's let's wait and see. Um, so I can make a thing and do some stuff. Make this a 3-3. This has flying? Jesus. 
so it's 18 yeah so I'm just dead to that but I've got ink moths to block so that's Menace uh, how big would this be 3-3 three, three? it's not very big so I suppose I'll just put the shadow spear on here okay they've got one card in hand um, I can potentially top deck a hammer and win. I can potentially no. This this will get me a hammer, so I can potentially win with an ink moth. I think, I think I can potentially win. They're just gonna right click attack all. Okay, let's animate an ink moth. I go to blocks, block El Turto, then block a Street Wraith. I should live. Right, they play a tap land. They've got one card in hand. Okay, we draw a Mem Knight. Um, okay, I'm just going to float mana. Oh, I'm going to use that mana, actually, the animate Ink Moth. All right, we'll grab Colossus Hammer. So guys able to equip it to our Ink Moth. They've got something. Ottawara. All right, that's the game. Nicely done, opponent. So, three and two overall. Let's go to the post league wrap up. All right. So, three and two overall wasn't bad. Uh, we started at three oh six oh, including beating Merktide two oh. Then we lost to Merktide uh, one and two. So, you know, that's that's a matchup that like even even playing taxes, I I'm sometimes pretty shaky on. Right. So, it's probably not a, the worst matchup. And then Living End was just they just had it all. I mean, like game one you need kind of a nutty hand to get under their living end. Like, if they resolve the living end, I don't think we're able to win from there too easily. Um, that game too, they just had everything though. Like, I had the, the medley mage, they dealt with my medley mage, they dealt with like my, my attempt at comboing, they attacked me, I managed to survive and attempt to combo again, and they again had the answer. You know, not much you can really do about that when they just have it all. I mean, I brought in these grave hate spells that would have been really good if I had have just like naturally found them, but it is what it is. Uh, I think the list feels nice. I think three ink moth still feels correct because it's just so hard to like get into a board state where you can win with it because like you need a lot of mana. And by the time you have enough mana, like the game's gone late enough that your opponent has the interaction. So I always felt good. The Blood Moon out of um out of Merc Tide is real punishing. But uh, that's kind of what you get, like, playing it as a saga deck. You know, Alpine Moons and Blood Moons just kind of ruin you sometimes. Mana base is whatever, zero drops or whatever. I like having this many zero drops with the reality chips. Um, I think the reality chips actually did really well. I was very, very happy with the second one. The Steel Shapes gifts, whatever. Everything else is kind of, kind of stock. Um, obviously, Culture Complete's not really necessary. It's not, like, a must-have. Same with Nettle Sis, but I think they're both really good. The sideboard's what still gets me with this deck. I think Meddling Mage did fine. Like, you know, it's kind of a nice thing to have against the end. And, like, obviously the combo decks, Lavinia's still nice. I kind of like these three one-of, Spell Pierces, whatever. Lion Sash is... Pr I don't know what to make of Lion Sash in this deck, because, like, sometimes it's pretty hard to get the double white a lot of times to cast Pure Steel, so, like, we don't have the white for the Lion Sash too often. Like, maybe it's worth just, like, leaning on these grave head spells and just get rid of Lion's Hash or maybe like just running Rest in Peace on the board I don't know Saints Fires felt really good uh, Pendings maybe these are just meant to be Marches maybe that's a change I should make is just change these back to Marches definitely didn't feel like I missed Path to Exile I think Meddling Mage over Path is the correct choice there but I think yeah these should probably be Marches and this Sash probably doesn't need to be there I mean I could potentially like just tr just cut one of these like Maybe cut the Soul Guide and just have Relic and then have like two Rest in Peace over the Sash and the Soul Guide. Um, I think I turn these into Marches. Because the, the, the Saga Mirrors were surprisingly not as easy as I assumed they would be. Um, I could even potentially like turn the Steel Shapers and the 22nd Land into like two more main deck somethings. I don't know what those somethings would be, but that is an option. Maybe, maybe Giver of Runes is just the right thing to be doing. Not that it really would have helped in the matches I lost. The matches I won were, were pretty good, so I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. Um, yeah, the league definitely felt like it went all right. Let's see what's in the chest. Even though the chest doesn't want to show up. What is this? What is this? Soul Scour. Okay. Well, 
as always, thank you all for watching. Let me know in the comments what you thought, all that jazz. Um, as always, until next time, bye-zy-bye-zy. Bye -zy.